How to make Nuno felt. In part one, we used some of this beautiful sari silk and some wool to cover the back of a piece of the silk. And this is what it ended up looking like. Today, we're going to cover the front of the silk and not the whole lot, just pieces of it to create some really interesting patterns. We're going to be using soap, some rubber gloves, my very strange little massager that's purple. Scissors are always useful, but I'm not sure what for today. Some detergent, some sort of soap. I said soap, but detergent as well as useful and some different colored wools. The bubble wrap is essential and we're going to put the bubble wrap on the table with the bubbly side down. Now I have sort of hand drafted, hand spun literally by hand, these little bits of black ropey stuff. And I'm trying to work out here how I am going to arrange them on the sample. When felt is attached to fabric, it's going to shrink. The wool will shrink and the fabric will not shrink. And so we want to create our pattern so that it covers the whole of the piece. We don't want one end to be all shrunk and the other end not to be. Bit of a floral theme happening here. And for some reason, when I did this, I was under the impression that in order to better hold down the black bits onto the fabric, I needed to put something across them. I probably could have avoided doing that. So it's a bit of a color exercise. Think of this as a bit of a Manet. Manet? No, Monet. <laughs> this is a bit of a Monet exercise. So let's start with a good wet down. This little tool I'm using is simply a piece of polystyrene covered in some bubble wrap. It's nice and light. At this stage, we're going to go really, really lightly. I have put across the sample a piece of nylon curtain fabric. And here I'm adding some detergent. The detergent definitely helps. And if you've seen my other videos, you'll know that I'm always inclined to use too much detergent. I have to be careful of doing that. So with my little roller thing, and I could just use my hand to do this, I'm going to stroke the fabric in each direction so that it felt evenly and across all of the fabric. This little tool, I made from a soap dish and stuck a handle on it but it was just nicely corrugated and it's a good size. Again I'm still working very lightly but it's so effective that the wool has already started to come through the nylon netting. So I'm going to take it off before it is totally enmeshed in the nylon netting and it's even harder to get off. This is one of the reasons why I'm wearing these white rubber gloves. It makes it easier to get the to get the netting off and you'll see how how much the wool has already gone through the netting. What we actually want is we want the wool to go through the silk, not the nylon netting so much. I just wanted to show you that in real time. The rest of this is at um, two and a half times real time. I'm doing lots of patting here. A very good felt maker once told me that patting should not be underrated. Any slight movement that we make helps the wool to go through the fabric and it also helps the wool fibers to enmesh and lock into each other, which is what we want. And speaking of what we want, I would love it if you would subscribe to this channel. It would be so great. And thanks to all of you who have. Here we see the wrong side. I've turned it over and you can see already some of that black wool is coming through. 
coming through the silk and can be seen on the other side. The silk is it's not really dense obviously it's very light but it's still a little bit dense it's not a really open weave if you want to make life really easy for yourself doing Nuno get an open weave in fact I promise maybe in part three I'll use something that's really got an open weave and you'll see how easy it can be to make this sort of Nuno and see just how much detergent I've used in this I picked up this idea watching some of the very clever European felt makers who seem to be quite keen on doing this little bit of a gentle wave holding on to both sides of the fabric. All of these, all of these tips and tricks get the felt going. If you were making a really big piece, like a big scarf or a dress, you would be using something to roll the fabric. You can't spend ages patting meters and meters of fabric, obviously. But with this little sample, you can. So I keep inspecting it every which way and seeing just how far it's going. And I'm not ignoring where I've got these little so-called florally bits. I'm not sure if they're going to work out as florally bits or if it will just work out as an abstract pattern. So using this little corrugated tool, this little bit of a polisher thing, I can work on each one of those and make sure that they're felting. This idea of dropping, shaking the, the piece, the little sample is always really useful as is giving it a bit of a roll, but it's such a small piece, I only need a small piece of bubble wrap to do that. You can see it's still got a lot of soap in it. We do it in one direction, turn it half halfway, and do that four times, roll in four different directions so that it starts to felt evenly. I don't know if you can see this, but this dropping effect is already having an impact and the clever ones of you will have picked up that I've turned over that bubble wrap and now the bubble wrap is lumpy side up. I've got a towel there to pick up some of the moisture. The towel also acts as another sort of resistance to the for the wool to work against and helps it helps the felting process to happen. You can see some of that yellow coming through on to the wrong side. Now in a minute I'm going to pick this up because it is starting to really start felting and the lovely rectangular shape I had starts to disappear because the pattern isn't on evenly. So at this point you can just Give it a good tug and pull, pull it out. And if some little bits of the wool become, come off some of the fabric, that's okay. You can work with that. And lastly, I've washed all the soap out of the piece. And now I am putting it into a glass that has just a little bit of vinegar in it. That helps to stop the felting process and change the pH level. And here it is. I have pressed it. Um, and I have pressed it with an ironing press, not an iron. And pulled it into shape. And it's interesting. I'm not sure that this looks like a plant thing, as I said. Fairy Monet. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it and hope to have.